the goal of every business isn't always necessarily to generate a profit. I'm not talking about non-profits or charity or something we associate outside of the scope of profit for a business. Oftentimes, businesses exist to fulfill the agenda, the ideal the ideology of a person that runs it. And we see this a lot of times. For example, this is from someone in my circle, he pointed this out. There is a large demand for Christian writing. A lot of Christian writers are getting their stuff out there. It may not be perfect, but there's a demand for it. People want the writing. And Bookstores like Barnes and Nobles will see Christian writing, and if they do publish it, they're going to make it in mediocre material. The cover is going to be different from the rest of the covers. Paper is going to be cheaper. The font is going to be more mediocre. It's going to look different from all the other sets of writing because it's not as revered. The Christian writing that is revered is put on the spiritual section because it's less religious. And for Brahmin circles, religion is seen as the ultimate evil when it's not. What really is the problem is that they ignore the fact that spiritual people that aren't religious tend to live more miserable lives. They, they're less happy. They commit more crimes, and they have more vices. We like to point out the imperfections of religious people and call it hypocrisy. Well, spiritualism has become the new hypocrisy. And of course, you can't have principles without being a hypocrite. Because you're acting upon something that basically is your super ego as opposed to your ids which sometimes they take over they win that's just the nature of the world second off is rock and roll there's a huge demand for rock and roll rock and roll is still selling out grog actually pointed this out rock and roll is still selling there's still a demand for it people keep saying they want to bring back rock Preferably in their decade, in their era, whether it's the 90s, alternative scene, or 80s, sort of underground alternative scene, the less angry one, the less angsty one, they like The Cure. People think of alternative, they may think of grunge, nirvana, or new metal, corn, but there's also stuff like The Cure and hair metal, glam rock, or maybe they want boomer music back, that progressive stuff or the hippie stuff. They want, they want it. Problem is that nowadays, rock and roll music, unless you follow the WWE, where each pay-per-view gets their own kind of rock song, a lot of rock music is becoming somewhat Christian rock. I'm not talking about creed with its sacrilegious imagery, its metaphors, and its butt rockers that are all high on sex appeal and low on talent. No, I do like some creed songs. But I'm just speaking about stuff like Flyleaf, Thousand Foot Crutch. What else has a bunch of those themes? I leave thousand foot crutch. Hmm. There's one I had before. Let me check. Whatever. It's there. There's a demand for it, and it's not being addressed. Rock and roll is basically left for 7th graders in that scene kid phase and then after you make it to high school it's seen, it's looked down upon to like rock and music 
maybe in ninth grade it's okay, but once you're in the tail end of sophomore year, if you like rock, then you're basically autistic. That, that's basically what it is. Like, when I said that metal was my favorite genre, people were like, what? And of course, the skaters were all about that, but they were listening to that basically some new metal and a lot of metal core a lot of that pulse hardcore influenced extreme metal you can even call it extreme and of course a more important more oh yeah dead poetics dead poetics is the other christian rock band i mean they're all like myspace looking but there's a demand for it nonetheless the third thing, and a really important thing, is white guys in sports. There's a big demand for it. People want them. I mean, Dirk Nowinski, for example, he's the finals MVP of 2011. He beat LeBron and Miami Heat in that year. And of course, Dirk is a thou like me, but unlike... Dirk, I don't have any basketball talent. In fact, I've never won a basketball game outside of playing against my little bro in my life, probably. I mean, I look to the right, that means I'm probably lying, and in the back of my head, I probably did win a game. Actually, I did, but it was way in the distance. Right, these victories are few and far between. But there's a demand for them, and you can see it in the fact that people in sports are getting scrawnier, and they're becoming more like sticks. They're Slendermen. I'm talking about the NBA. That could probably be true for sports like baseball, and which is slowly becoming more of an international sport. And it's losing its national pastime record for good reasons. It's been given a bad name, and it draws more money now overseas than it does in just one place, but also football, too. But it's an especially big thing in basketball. So I'm going to say white guys in basketball, because the stereotype is that there's strong black guys, that they're... Black people are big, muscular, they're like Terry Crews. However, this isn't necessarily the case. A lot of them are basically ectomorphs like me. Maybe even worse, because I have the broad shoulders and those style features that... And my veins really pop out. If you see me in person, I just got a lot of... I look pale and green because of the veins popping out so I have that weird look but white guys tend to have more of a mesomorph build and we need more of that in sports like basketball because the fact that there's a bunch of scrawny guys in there a bunch of slender men and the fact that Shaq retired a lot of big guys retired. The games are getting slower because it needs a big guy to pick up this pace. Without that large forward, you're not going to have fast paced games. You're not going to have any of that energy. And look at the 90s NBA, where, yeah, this was when black basketball players came into a prevalence and but these guys, they were big players. Now it seems that everyone has my build where they all look like crossfitters. And why aren't they like looking for the guys that actually do have that kind of build? Like a big build, even if it is a white guy. And then going past basketball in the UFC... People like Brock Lesnar, white guys, they don't want them. 
not necessarily Lesnar, because Lesnar was hated more because he was a WWF, WWE player, and people don't like those kinds of wrestlers. Problem is that with the UFC, these talented white guys aren't getting in. It's the third worlders from Brazil, the land of poverty. Brazil, South Americans, everywhere from around the world. That these like black ass foreign guys that. And that's because the UFC guy, I think it's Dana White, I'm not entirely sure. Some name that sounds like a dykey lesbo chick. This guy just doesn't like the presence of white guys there. And as a result, we're getting a bunch of these generic, douchey looking guys that ironically fit, look better in Ed Hardy shirts than the white trash people that Swipples vilified him for. Anyway. So, people aren't as degenerate in their tastes as you think. What's happening is that demand is being squashed, ironically, by a form of religious fanaticism. Oh, not necessarily a divine one, but a profane one. One of profanity, one where, ew, you like stuff like Christianity or stuff that's not Lana Del Rey, Jesus, uh, who actually like book writers that advocate for the religion in a religious sense, not a spiritual sense. You actually like having white guys in your sport. Um, that's the one issue I have with a lot of reactionaries, and come next Friday you'll see a blog post talking about that, that they assume that the masses are more morally despicable than they actually are. And a lot of them are morally despicable. A lot of that comes from the fact that these are people that are inherently on the left side of the bell curve, and if they don't have that, then they might have some other pressing issues, some cognitive deficiencies that are social or psychological that hold them back from being what we really need. Anyway. I'm going to save this script. This is Mr. Walker 7. Take care, guys.